Well, last week wasn't interesting, right? Wasn't going to be anything special, right? Well, not exactly. Not exactly. As last week, you know, week three, you know, had some struggling wins. We had a lot of struggling wins, as you see. But now, now the separation truly begins as we have a smorgasbord of top 25 matchups. So we'll talk about all of them this week, you know, and everything like that. So, uh, yeah. I mean, my Longhorns, they were tied up with Wyoming in the fourth quarter, 10-10. But luckily, you know, Texas pulled away 31-10. 10 they pulled away. Florida State, if it weren't for Boston College, you know, putting up all these penalties, I mean, Boston College would have won that game. I'm just being real. 18 penalties is not going to win you a game. Penn State, yeah, Luke Altmaier is terrible. Um, I mean, at least he's not Georgia Southern's quarterback who threw like five interceptions. But Altmaier threw four, got benched. And, I mean, Drew Aller and company just didn't look the greatest out there. I mean, 30 to 13, look, look, it looks nice, but ultimately it didn't tell me very much about this Penn State team. It didn't tell me too much of anything. You know, weak West Virginia team is not going to cut it for me. I don't care, you know, what West Virginia fans say. They're not a good team. They're, you know, you got lucky that the backyard brawl was even televised on ABC this week. You got lucky. You got lucky because both y'all and Penn State. I mean, not Penn State, but Pitt. Yeah, y'all are not. Y'all are. Y'all are not it. The backyard brawl ain't it. I'm sorry. It's not it. Not this year, anyway. Maybe next year. When when both of you maybe are like zero and zero. I don't know when that game is played next year. Uh, but yeah, who cares about the backyard brawl? That's not important right now. Yeah, Penn State, kind of lucky. I'm sure I'll get. I'm sure I'll get the Pitt and West Virginia fans angry at me today. But it's all right. Um, Alabama might have the worst performance of them all. You know, Ty Simpson got put in the game. Tyler Buckner got put in the game. Neither of them got. Neither of them could do anything. They had to lean on the run to end the game. And seventeen to three, you think? You think? You know. Wait a minute, that's not that's not an outbound type score. That's like that's gotta be somebody else soccer. That's like an Auburn or something like that. No. It was Alabama. I mean, there were times in this game where South Florida really could have taken the game over, and yeah, there were you know, weather delays. Or actually weather delays throughout the throughout the day, like in multiple games, but this one was very, very noticeable, you know, like an hour or so, and yet USF was tied with Alabama for like majority of this game. It was three of three for majority of this game, and that's the sad part. That's really the sad part. You know, I get NIL, I get the transfer portal, I get all that stuff, but yeah, this isn't a USF team that's a Big East team anymore. This is a USF team that's in the American now. Not that type of team anymore. I'm sorry, they're not. This is in 2007. At least I would hope not for a team like Alabama. For me, personally, I, I welcome 2007 type chaos. But yeah, this wasn't it. This is this is an Alabama team that looks completely out of sorts. Now, now that Jalen Milrow had to sit on the bench for a week, I wonder what he's thinking. I wonder what he, what kind of thoughts he's cooking up. Is he going to have a Jake Coker type season? I know people are propping, you know, that storyline up. You know, the whole oh yeah, he could be like Jake Coker and win a national championship or something like that. It's like oh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll find out. Colorado, they really had nine million people, including myself, tune into them until two thirty Eastern in the morning, two thirty a.m. It's 130 over here. A team that was favored by 21 points. They had to go to overtime with Colorado State, who kept dinking and ducking them with crossing rounds. Are you serious right now? Travis Hunter lost for the game, you know, due to an injured liver. You know, it was a quote unquote hard hit, you know, that got so much attention that's so negative. That we don't need to talk about here because social media ate it up to death. I mean, just 
just chill out, people. It's just a game. I'll say that much. Unfortunately for Tennessee, though, I don't think they're chill right now. Yeah, they're they, they, they I don't know what happened here. I really don't. Like the run game of the Florida Gators was out of this world. Graham Mertz played a clean game, and I just don't get it. Tennessee, like they they looked completely out of sorts in this one, and they lost. Plain and simple. And then Missouri, in the best game of the day, they beat Kansas State with a 61-yarder. Good old shootout. Real good shootout. Brady Cook, Will Howard, them boys delivered. Them boys delivered. Felt like a Big 8 game again. Felt like a Big 8 game. Um, Georgia, they looked kind of pedestrian for like a half against South Carolina. I was like, okay, South Carolina. And then Georgia put them back to earth realizing that South Carolina doesn't have the own line, doesn't have, you know, all the pieces together, and Georgia finally was able to put something together to put South Carolina away. Definitely, definitely a cause of concern for Georgia. You can't start slow, similar to, you know, teams like Texas. You can't start slow. You have to put it all, you have to put it all away the whole way through, you know. And then Mel Tucker – Pretty much getting fired. He is probably the least of Michigan State's problems right now as far as the actual team goes because that defense got lit up by Michael Penix. Got lit up. I mean, Washington had some injuries too. You know, it was I think it was McMillan that got injured. And, and still, over 400 passing yards. I mean, come on. Penix for Heisman. Penix for Heisman, please. I'm begging you. And then the, the other performances by LSU, North Carolina, Ole Miss, and Duke, more so LSU, North Carolina, Ole Miss, I had to include Duke in there because they beat Northwestern. And, you know, Northwestern, you know, even though they're absolutely terrible and have no head coach technically, uh, Northwestern probably might surprise somebody somewhere down the line. I mean, it's, it's, it's the Big Ten, and we all know a Big Ten team that's – Absolutely terrible can you know upset a true contender down the line. We all we all know this. We all know this. It could happen. It could happen. But we'll see. But yeah, very impressive performances by those teams. And here's the slate. You see it. You love it. I'm loving it. I am loving everything about the slate. You look at it all the way until Pac-12 after dark, which we're gonna get a double dose of. On ESPN and Fox yet again, a double dose of it with two top 10 teams. That early slate, you know, sneakily underrated games here, you know, undefeated Rutgers against Michigan. I didn't really talk about the storylines for some of these other games, you know, but, but there are some big games here, you know, that I didn't really get to, you know, put on the last slide. But yeah, Rutgers, undefeated Rutgers, taking on Michigan in that early window. Interesting game right there. Um, you also have our Arkansas LSU. Um, again, big time rivalry. LSU trying to stay on top of things in the SEC and keep themselves rolling after that loss. Florida State and Yoper. Texas and Baylor. You know, Baylor plays tough. Texas plays tough too, but Texas can't play slow. That's the problem. Um, North Carolina and Pitt, yeah, I know I talked a lot of shit about Pitt real quick, but yeah. Um, North Carolina, they got to keep the train rolling. You want to be one of those top two teams in the ACC, you got to keep the train rolling and beat Pitt. And then, of course, the Pac-12 after dark games because – it's Pac-12 after dark. Things could get weird. Arizona State and Cal are not that great, but things can get weird. We will see. We will see. But for the actual games that matter here, you know, we got a lot of storylines here. Florida State Clemson, really one of those games that can decide the ACC right off the bat. You know, can Kate Klubnik, can he show the country what he got? What Does he have what it takes take on a Florida State defense hungry to have a better game because they got lit up by Thomas Castellanos for 
I mean, he ran for like 100-something yards on him, threw for like 200 on him. So Florida State's looking to have a better game on defense, offense too. But I'd say the defense is more of a huge factor here. Uh, Again, the Buffs, no Travis Hunter. So the rest of the defense, Shiloh, you know, you, you definitely stepped up. Shiloh Sanders definitely stepped up on Saturday. But going to need some more. Going to need some more. You know, Bo Nix, I mean, he's got a – he's got he's got some dynamic guys to help him out. He's got some dynamic guys to help him out, like Bucky Irving, Troy Franklin. You know, those two guys especially. Going to be something. Going to be really, really something. Jalen Milrow, he might be ready to go and ready to – Prove the doubters wrong for realsies, but the rest of the Bama team has to show up. This isn't an Ole Miss team that is going to lie over and play dead. Lane Kiffin wants that smoke. Jackson Dart and Sean Judkins, that defense of Ole Misses that can play really good when they want to. Physical tight game. We're expecting one here. Um, Utah UCLA is a sneaky one, actually kind of sneaky because Utah doesn't have a quarterback still. UCLA under Chip Kelly is a, is, is a Chip Kelly-led team. Spread offense. That should be fun. Should be a fun one. Uh, if you're not watching Oregon, Colorado, or Ole Miss, Alabama, definitely check in on Utah, UCLA. The other game you should probably check out, you know, like in the later window, you know, is the – Two teams that are remaining in the Pac-12, the actual two teams left, Washington State, Oregon State, they give us a nice QB battle. Cam Ward, DJ Uyakale. That That is nice. Oregon State, Washington State should be fun. Really good defenses by both of these teams. Both of these teams have actually proven a little bit of something-something. So this is, this is the start of the Pac-12 gauntlets. And that's not that's not the only one. Again, there's three Pac-12 games that have big to big time implications. And in Penn State and Iowa, in the Penn State whiteout game, the defenses for these teams are outstanding. Which offense can do more? Draller on one side, Kate McNamara on the other side. You know, that is going to be truly a game. A Big Ten type game. It is going to be a Big Ten type game, and then Ohio State Notre Dame game of the week. I mean, what 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 else could you say about this game that has been said already? This backfield, Audrey Guestime. I mean, there's other guys in that rotation too, but Estime especially. Sam Hartman leading the way. What can that Buckeyes defense do against the run? Ohio State's wide receivers: Amaka Abuka, Marvin Harrison Jr. They've been able to step up under Kyle McCord. And, yeah, we've been criticizing McCord a lot over the past couple weeks. But Ohio State was finally able to get it together and score over 60 points. Yay, that's what they wanted. They scored over 60. But this is a true test for Mr. McCord and company. This is a true test for Ohio State. This Irish defense really hasn't been super, super tested yet against you know, elite wide receivers, we'll see what kind of game we get. Uh, a lot of things, uh, people are saying, oh, this favors Ohio State, this favors Ohio State, but it's going to come down, really. It's going to come down, really, to the matchups in this game. And the matchup that is going to be most interesting to watch is the quarterback battle. That's, like, don't get me wrong, the backfield of Notre Dame against the Buckeyes defense is equal to the wide receivers against the Irish defense. But the quarterbacks, we know Sam Hartman can play, but but it's still Ohio State's defense. We know Cotton McCord can, you know, actually, you know, he can, he's developing, but can he develop into that guy for Ohio State that can do no wrong? We'll find out. We will find out. And then, again, you know, the other games in that week four slate should be fun as, should be fun as well. So we got a lot. We got a lot. I'm ready for it all. So 
take it in, breathe it in. A lot of college football is happening this weekend, and we are going to see a lot of separation come Sunday morning when these games end. So that being said, I'll see you all tomorrow. Um, And then later on Sunday, we'll talk the PLL, Man Cup, NLL Draft. Yeah, all that. Um, We're going to save the indoor arena update for another weekend. I thought it was going to be this weekend, but there's been a few announcements. I'm trying to save it for a weekend where there's really nothing coming up. So, you know, got to definitely start scrapping some of those videos that I had planned. So, you know, instead of trying to do a monthly, I'll just scrap, you know, certain videos and everything like that. So I'll, I'll update y'all when I can as far as that. Thanks for sticking with me throughout the, some of these delays and, you know, late videos because again this is about 10 o'clock at night i have to go to bed i have to go to bed real soon so i'm dry, i'm trying my best I'm trying my best even though it's definitely hurting to be recording this video right now especially after i was just on the phone for three hours so in any case i will see you all on wednesday to talk the nfl we got we got some things to talk about i, I i'm i'm uh, I'm kind of worried to talk about these things, but we got to talk about these things. So we'll talk NFL tomorrow. Take care. Have a good night. See y'all soon.